Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to calculate the future value of an ordinary annuity. We're going to do this using the financial calculator, specifically the Sharp EL738. Now you've done a lot of lessons using this financial calculator, so if you'd like to check many of those lessons out on time value of money and many more, as well as doing the future value of an ordinary annuity using the formula and other lessons using the formula, you'll find all the links to those lessons in the description below. But how we, how do we do the future value of an ordinary annuity using the financial calculator Sharp EL738? The first thing you, you'd want to do with your financial calculator and you want to get in the habit of doing this is to clear the memory of your calculator so that you can accurately do your calculations. So how do we clear the memory? Well, you can press second function and then you press here where it's written mode because on top of it is written CA which stands for clear all. So I've done that. Alternatively, if you want to clear the entire memory for your calculator, you press second function and then you press here where it's written alpha. On top it's written memory clear and then you press zero and then you press zero again to confirm. Otherwise, you can also find at the back of your calculator, there's a small button so you can use something to press it which will clear your entire memory as well. So here's how you calculate the future value of an ordinary annuity using the financial calculator. The first example tells us that John deposits 3,000 rand into a savings account at the end of each year for a period of 10 years. This investment earns 5% interest compounded annually. Calculate how much he will receive in 10 years time. So this is an ordinary annuity because he's contemplating saving 3,000 rand at the end of each year. So it's every year and it's at the end. So we have to take note of that. So when we're punching it into your calculator, you also take note of the number of compoundings. Now, when we did the same calculation using the formula, we explained that in detail, that the compoundings matter a great deal because the compoundings will affect your number of compounding periods as well as your interest rate. But here, it's only compounded once. That means it's only compounded annually. So we won't have to take that into account in the first example. But in the second example, you'll see how we'll account for that. So how do you do this first example? Well, the first thing is to put the number of compounding periods. Well, since it's compounded annually, we we'll take, we'll take the number of years and we are told it's for a period of 10 years. So we we punch in 10 and then we press here, it's written N because that's the number of compounding periods. And then, so you press the number and then you press these elements over here. And then the percentage, it's 5%. So you press five and then you press here, it's written I slash Y because it's the interest rate. And then the next thing is the payment. What is the payment? Well, it's putting in 3,000 rand at the end of every year for the next 10 years. So we get 3,000. And then I press here where it's written plus slash minus. I put it as a negative because if I leave it as a positive, my future value will be a negative, which does not really matter. It won't change your answer. So I put it as a negative because it's a payment you will have to pay. And then the future value will be as a positive because it's something you will receive. But it does not really matter. You just need to know that uh, if payment is positive, future value is negative and vice versa. So I put I press PMT, which stands for payment. And then what all I need to do now is to do is to compute future value. So I press here, it's written comp, and then I press future value. Comp stands for compute future value. And that is my future value. If he invests 3,000 rand for the next 10 years, he will have an amount of 37,733 rand 68 cents. 